isn't this a beauty? It's an old-fashioned biplane. 50 years ago, this was the latest model. Now, this plane isn't like most planes today. For one thing, you're flying out in the open air. You really feel the wind in your face. And you have to dress warmly, even in the summer, because it's cold up in the sky. So this is the cockpit. It's where the pilot sits to fly the plane. And you notice there's no steering wheel. So how do you get the plane to fly where you want it to go? You use the control stick. The control stick steers the plane left and right, down and up. When this airplane was built, you couldn't always find an airport. So planes needed these big rubber tires so they could land in fields like this. Flying was risky when airplanes were first invented. Still, some people couldn't wait to try it. Their planes had wooden frames and wings made of cloth. Biplanes had two sets of wings to lift them off the ground. Sometimes planes were even designed with three sets of wings. The people who flew these planes were brave, and some were daredevils, adventurers, who risked their lives for the thrill of flying. These pilots pushed themselves and their planes to the limit. How high could they go? How fast? And how far could they fly without stopping? Well, this book is about one of those pilots, and her name was Ruth Law. Ruth Law thrills a nation. Story and Pictures by Don Brown. Read by Linda Lavin. On November 19, 1916, Ruth Law tried to fly from Chicago to New York City in one day. It had never been done before. It was a frosty, blustery morning Ruth woke up before dawn, but she did not feel the cold. To get used to the cold weather, she had slept in a tent on the roof of a Chicago hotel. She put on two woolen suits, one on top of the other. Then she put on two leather suits and covered her bulky outfit with a skirt. In 1916, a polite lady always wore a skirt. It was still dark when Ruth went to Grant Park on the Lake Michigan shore where her plane was waiting. It was the tiny plane she flew in air shows, and it was old. Mechanics attached a special windshield to protect Ruth from the cold wind. They added a second gas tank so she wouldn't have to stop for fuel more than once, but this made the plane too heavy so they took off the lights. Without lights, Ruth would have to reach New York City before nightfall. At 7.20 in the morning, Ruth climbed into the cockpit. She removed her skirt and stuffed it behind her seat. She opened the throttle. The plane leapt forward and bounced over bumps and hollows. It raced awkwardly across the ground, then lifted toward the sky. A fierce wind whipped through Chicago. It shook and tossed the small plane. A dozen onlookers watched in fear. A mechanic cried. She narrowly topped the buildings and slowly climbed into the sky above Chicago. Ruth Law was on her way to New York City. A mile above ground, Ruth sliced through the frigid winter air at 100 miles an hour. 
She set her course by consulting the crude scroll of maps she'd taped together and attached to her leg. Ruth flew for nearly six hours. She was two miles away from Hornell, New York, where a group of supporters was waiting. Then the engine quit. The fuel tank was empty. Ruth had only one chance to make a safe landing. The field seemed to come up at her. The crowd of spectators spilled into her path. The plane brushed their heads. Ruth was on the ground. She had flown 590 miles nonstop. It was a record. No one in America had ever flown farther. But Ruth's flight was not over. At 3.24 in the afternoon, her plane was refueled, and Ruth set out again for New York City. Newspapers told the story of Ruth's flight. A crowd in Binghamton, New York, had turned out, hoping to see her fly overhead. They were not disappointed. At first, she was just a speck in the sky, but soon she made a striking cameo against the late afternoon sun. Suddenly, the plane slanted toward the ground and disappeared behind some trees. She's down! Something's broken! Nothing was broken. Ruth had decided to land. She would not be able to read her instruments in the dark. She tied the plane to a tree, wrapped her skirt around her, and accepted the hospitality of strangers. Ruth Law, welcome to Binghamton. The next morning, Ruth flew on to New York City. When she landed, an army general and a military band were there to greet her. Ruth was a heroine. You beat them all, the general said as he shook her hand. Newspapers heralded her feat. President Woodrow Wilson called her great. A huge banquet was given in her honor. Ruth Law set an American nonstop cross-country flying record 590 miles, and she thrilled a nation. Flying was an exhilarating adventure for pilots like Ruth Law. And though many people wanted to try it, very few had the courage.